Ever since I was a little kid and first played Halo Combat Evolved on my brother's Xbox, I have loved the Halo games. One of the most recognizable items from the series is the health pack. Well, after the Ghost, Banshee, Warthog, Needler, Sniper Rifle, Master Chief's helmet, yeah, I'll stick with one of the most recognizable. Anyways, I've been thinking recently that I really need a workshop first aid kit, considering how often I cut my hands. So when I thought of the health pack, I thought that this would be an awesome way to take an item from one of my all-time favorite video games and make it real. So without further ado, let's hop into Fusion 360 and start modeling. The core of the model is an in-game screenshot of the health pack, which I imported as a canvas. This was great for getting the overall shape and relative positioning of the details. I didn't trace the whole screenshot, since there was a bit of perspective error, but instead used mirror lines to make sure that everything was nice and symmetrical. I split the overall shape into two pieces, and then started working on the details. Again, I dealt with the perspective error in the screenshot by tracing as little as I had to, and then completing the sketch with mirror lines. Even then, I had to do a lot of manual correcting. You may remember that in the first couple Halo games, the health packs had a red cross on top. The developers replaced the cross with an H after the International Red Cross actually objected to the use of the symbol in video games. Adding the handles to the health pack was one of the trickier parts to figure out. I started by sketching the handle outline, creating an angled plane, and then extruding the sketch onto this plane. Then I could use the draft tool to create the undercut. I used the same sort of workflow to create the little ergonomic cutouts for the handles. The last detail to add to the outside was these sort of textured grips. Now that this thing was starting to look like a health pack, I was ready to start sculpting the inside to make a functional first aid kit. I used the shell tool to hollow out the health pack, and I set the wall thickness as a user parameter so I could change this throughout the project if it didn't seem like the walls were going to be strong enough. You'll see me use user parameters a lot in this project, and they really are key to taking full advantage of the parametric design capabilities of Fusion 360. The two halves joined together through a super simple three-barrel hinge. I made sure to add a bit of space between the barrels so the kit would open easily. I added a bump out to the bottom piece, which raises it about half an inch from the wall, and this accomplishes a few things. First, it allows the kit to lie flat against the wall when it's open. Second, it creates extra storage space and allows me to fit an entire roll of medical tape in the kit. And third, it creates this nice shadow line around the piece, which I think looks better than if it was mounted flush against the wall. I added a simple hook for the roll of medical tape with a little ridge that keeps it from sliding off. The next step was to add cavities to hold rare earth magnets, which I used as a closure. Finally, I could add little shelves to hold band-aids, tweezers, alcohol pads, eye drops, and other items. I had a bit of trouble figuring out how to build the shelves around the roll of medical tape, but I eventually figured out that I could make these little cubbies on either side of the tape 
that are perfect for holding band-aids. Once I got the shelves finished, all that was left to add were mounting holes, and this baby was ready to print. I printed everything on my Prusa i3 Mark IIIs using white Sunlu PLA. This filament has given me nothing but fantastic clean results, and I'll put a link to it in the description, along with all the other tools and materials I used in this project. The bottom half of the kit took just under 10 hours to print, using the 0.15mm quality layer height preset in Prusa Slicer. The top half took a bit longer to print, clocking in at 12 hours and 40 minutes. I could have used less support material and had a shorter print time if I printed this piece upside down, but that would leave little bumps on the exposed top surface where it touches the support material. I didn't want to have to do a lot of sanding, so I opted for this orientation which optimizes the surface finish. Removing the support material on the bottom piece was a piece of cake compared to the absolute monster that I had to deal with on the top piece. I'm not gonna lie, this was definitely the most annoying part of this project. The fact that the support material was inside a concave shape with lots of nooks and crannies made it very difficult to remove. I haven't done much printing with support material, so if you have any tips on how to improve this process, please let me know in a comment below. I would love to hear your tips. Once I had that over with, I drilled out the last of the support material from inside the barrel hinges. You may have noticed that the bottom piece printed without the little ridge on the tape hook. I actually printed this separately to avoid all the extra material that would be generated to support the overhang. This was easy enough to attach with a bit of super glue. I gave the mating edges a light sanding just to get rid of any 3D printing artifacts and make sure everything lined up nicely. Then I super glued the magnets into place. I picked up this precision paint syringe, which was perfect for applying red paint to the recessed details. A bent paper clip came in handy to get the paint into all the nooks and crannies. And yes, this is technically leather paint, which isn't the best for painting PLA. But I only needed a little bit, and this is what I had. After painting the latch, I inserted the needle to use as a hinge pin, and the first aid kit was ready to be hung and filled.
After hours spent looking at in-game screenshots, modeling, printing, removing support material, painting, and not to mention figuring out those dang shelves, seeing the filled health pack click shut so perfectly was incredibly satisfying. It's really nice having the first aid kit right within reach on my workbench, and I hope this helps me avoid bleeding on any future projects. If I had to change one thing, I would probably make the kit a little bigger, but it holds pretty much everything I need for 99% of workshop injuries. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and check out the rest of my channel for all sorts of different project videos. From woodworking, to leatherworking, to 3D printing, to leatherworking and 3D printing together. And as always, have a great day.